Hey guys, welcome to Redout Productions. We're here today near Paw Paw, West Virginia. Actually, we're on the Maryland side of the Potomac River, and we're here today at the Paw Paw Tunnel. This tunnel, measuring over 3,000 feet in length, is the only major tunnel on the CNO Canal. It was meant to be built for only two years. It took almost 15 years to finish and nearly bankrupt the canal company. This is the story of the Paw Paw Tunnel, the CNO Canal's money pit. When the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal Company organized in 1825, its goal was to construct a man-made waterway that connected the East Coast directly to the Ohio River Valley. Here lay unimaginable fields of coal, iron ore, timber, and other natural resources that could rapidly grow the still relatively young United States. The canals were already in abundance in early 19th century in America. While similar skirting operations did exist, including George Washington's Potomac Canal Company in the 1780s, the technology had yet to exist to tackle the Potomac River Corridor. Nobody wanted to challenge the Appalachian Mountains directly and instead relied on the Erie Canal in New York to travel west. Many businesses and traders in the Mid-Atlantic region feared never being able to capitalize on the lucrative lands and resources in and around the Ohio River Valley. This fear turned into public pressure, leading to the idea of making a canal from the Chesapeake Bay to Pittsburgh. Hopes were high when the ground was broken in 1828 on the canal, but the reality of the task ahead quickly became apparent. The CNO Canal grew far more costly than anyone had imagined. Investors had hoped for a canal only costing $4 million, but surveyors estimated somewhere over $22 million to construct the entire route. To keep investments, the canal company paid for further surveys of smaller segments, given a combined estimate of $13 million. The CNO Canal was also fighting with the passage of time, as if the same year ground was broken for the waterway, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad was organized. Boat and train would be fighting for ownership over the best right-of-way along the Potomac River to reach the west. By 1835, most of the canal had been finished. However, there were still roughly 50 miles to get to Cumberland. Part of the main issue was of the delay had to deal with the fact that it was the Paw Paw Bends in the Potomac River. These bends, very sharp going back and forth, there wasn't a lot of clearance for a towpath. They would have to blast through several cliffs and dam the Potomac River. The alternative was tunneling through the mountain. Lee Montgomery, an engineer, had prior experience working for the canals. He had worked before on the Union Canal Tunnel, which is to this day the oldest transportation tunnel in the United States. The problem is that tunnel was only 700 feet. The Paw Paw Tunnel would have to be five times that amount of length. He was awarded the contract in March of 1836 and estimated it would take $33,000 to finish the project using primary Irish workers over two year span. Things would quickly change, however. With his team of Irish laborers, Montgomery had hoped to be able to bore through the mountain at a rate of 10 feet per week. But most of his initial labor crew had little experience in tunneling. The call was instead given out around the world for immigrants to work on the tunnel. Eventually, hundreds of English, Welsh, and German workers would join the Irish. The work crews used black powder to weaken the shell. The rest of the task was done with pick and shovel. But even with all of these resources, the bore rate was at a crawling pace of 12 feet per week. Complicated matter was a cholera outbreak between 1837 and 38 that devastated the numbers of workers. Rock slides were a frequent event, as the loose shell once chiseled through would quickly collapse and endanger the work crews. All these external pressures exasperated ethnic differences. Fights were common among Irish and English workers. There's at least one recorded case of the German camp downstream being raided. The tavern in nearby Old Town was suspected of being damaged by rioting tunnel workers. A riot destroyed parts of the village of Little Orleans north of the tunnel. By 1840, the tunnel construction had nearly bankrupted the canal company. What was meant to be a shortcut had kept the canal from reaching Cumberland by several years. The partially bored tunnel would have to sit abandoned for several years until the canal could amass enough funds to complete construction. In 1848, the partnership of McCulloch and Day would want a subcontract to finish the work, establishing a kiln nearby to produce over 6 million bricks to line the tunnel lay in the last ones in 1850. When it was all said and done, it had taken 14 years, $600,000, and 
at over 200,000 cubic yards of shale rock removed to build this tunnel. I seen here this bike crew uh, going on today. What a problem was with this tunnel that only one way traffic could really make its way through, especially with a canal, one boat at a time. Downstream boats coming out Cumberland with load, loaded with coal got the right of way for this tunnel. Uh, you would have had a white light on the bow, a red light on the stern. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there have been several cases where there were standoffs between the boats here at either end, waiting for the other to take their turn. You would end up having uh, one case, the superintendent had to leave his house, come out here, grab some corn stalks and set a fire in the tunnel to snuff both of the owners out. And there were cases of fistfights occurring here at the tunnel between uh, competing uh, boat captains. Uh, yes. By the time the canal reached and opened in Cumberland in 1850, the Baltimore and Ohio had already established tracks there eight years prior. But the canal still had an advantage. Trains were primarily for passenger service in the 1850s. They did not have the capacity to haul large bulks of freight. The canal, on the other hand, had the advantage of hauling large loads of coal out of Cumberland and taking them down to D.C. So the canal was still profitable even after such a setback building this tunnel. The canal saw its boom period for the 1850s, 60s, and 70s. Eventually, the railroad did catch up with the canals, and by the 1890s, the railroads were winning. But the canals still had interest now for passengers, tourist seekers. This tunnel itself was a very big prominent highlight on the travels from D.C. to Cumberland. There's many photos of picnic goers stopping and lying up here and posing for photos at this tunnel. Though it was never any record breaker for tunnels, it still was an impressive feat of engineering. By 1924, the canal suffered greatly from various flooding, poor upkeeping, and ultimately would have to be closed. It wouldn't be until a couple decades later that the National Park Service would secure the rights of the canal towpath and maintain it as a hiking trail and as part of the Park Service. And today you can hike through the Paw Paw Tunnel. Many people have come through here every day. The tunnel is located just a half a mile off of Maryland Route 51. Just pull off into the parking lot. You can't miss it.